All right, thanks for staying with us now. If you are just tuning in, thank you for joining the conversation. So at, as witnessed by many Nigerians and reported by a credible news source, INEC by model voter accreditation system, that's the Beavers, an electronic voting machine configured with fingerprints and facial recognition, recognition features um, was at the center of the controversy that um, belighted the February 25th polls. Now voters... Uh, Accre voters are accredited with the Beavers device, which also transmits uh, election results from polling unit stations to online servers. But results were not transmitted on time in the last election, sparking allegations of vote regain. Now, several observers, including the European Union, said that the election fell short of expectations and lacked transparency. Now, the governorship polls originally scheduled for Saturday, will now hold on uh, March 18th and will run simultaneously with the elections of the local parliament representatives. Now, today we're discussing this postponement of the gubernatorial elections and we're asking, how do you feel about this? Now, please, let's share what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. All right, so I don't know how I feel about this um, postponement. I really feel sad because, honestly speaking, I just wanted to be like, let it be done and it's dusted. Because, again, every the, it's almost like the economy is on hold. You want to mm -hmm. do transactions. I'm a businesswoman. Mm -hmm. You want to do transactions, they'll tell you that, please, just wait till after the election. Every little thing you want to do, wait till after the election. So postponing the elections for me was just, I, I, didn't, I wasn't taking it well because I was, had already planned in my head, okay, give or take worst case scenario. Um, we just do what we have to do. I didn't have to, like, so my kids don't come home for holiday. Um, because of the presidential election, I couldn't go to see them. Now again, this one. So it's just, it's just a bit of you know, a downer for me. I don't know how good it is for you people that are inside the campaign, if this an, is an addition or it's going to be like, you know, also a downer for you guys, but yeah. I don't know. So it, it's sad that, you know, it, uh, we've had four years to prepare for elections. Couple hundred billions invested in INEC. Um, an Electoral Act amendment that was well-defined, assented to law by the president. And then we now find ourselves suffering from incompetency and inefficiencies. Um, and I'd say this, you know, with all sense of seriousness. This is what you call the dividends of good governance that's missing. If we had competent people, round pegs in round holes, square pegs in square, square holes where there's accountability, people don't live up to the mandate of their office, they get fired, they get replaced, people get reprimanded, you will see INEC and all of the past status of government agencies that are well funded do the bidding of the people. So, you know, from top to bottom, as they call it, when the head is sick, you don't expect the other parts of the body to function properly. So um, for us, you know, election postponement is something we anticipated. Um, you will find it very typical that in Nigeria, elections do not hold on election day. The presidential election, um, by some act of, you know, what I call it. I was chance, actually shocked that it that happened, yeah. But then you could see, you know, some of the, what we call YO, that was equally introduced. Last minute, we've seen that perhaps the incumbent government got a bit of an upper hand. A lot of um, electoral materials did not get to, uh, you know, voting uh, boots. You saw registration cards for political parties like Labour Party not having their agents receive their cards. So it's just all kinds of inefficiencies that's introduced to basically make you handicapped. And, you know, when you think of the reasons why the elections have been postponed, you're saying to yourself, this is impossible. Yes, you should have systems that should be subject to audit in the event that there's a challenge. But then at the point where that challenge is raised, INEC should equally be configured with enough devices to say, okay, the devices that participated in last Saturday's elections, we can withhold it, we can deploy other devices to fulfill the needs of our elections. But then you're finding all of these cat and mouse, as we call it, simply trying to perhaps aid and abet perhaps what we call some criminality that may have taken place with giving another party the upper hand. So it's shameful, to say the least. How do you feel, Alera, about this postponement? Hmm. Honestly, I'm unhappy about it. It's making me anxious. It's, it is actually scattering, you know, livelihood for a lot of people that I know. Um, I, I know that, uh, for instance, the whole Naira thing is also affecting. People couldn't do anything two weeks ago. Now, I mean, yeah, two weeks ago. Last weekend, we're looking forward to this weekend, and now we have now it's been postponed to next weekend. That's if it's going to even happen next weekend. So, so many people's lives have been put on hold. But for everyone is the anxiety of 
what happened with the presidential election is that what's going to still happen with the gubernatorial election because you know, now everybody's just like uneasy because we were looking forward to something fantastic. I mean, like I can mention, a lot of young people came out to experience this thing. They want to make sure that they are able to be part of the people that are making the change in the country. However, it is discouraging that we were hopeful, but now it's looking like we don't even have the courage to be hopeful anymore. I mean, it's everybody so is saying, um, what's the word that everybody says? Um, put it in God's hands. Mm. That's now where everybody's going to now. Mm. How long are we going to put it in God's hands? Mm. God has given it to us to do, but now the citizens are tired. We are exhausted, mm. and we are hoping that, and that hope, like I said, see, I'm saying hope, because that's the next thing. What else will you do? Let me come to you, Diola, then I'll come to you, Jennifer. Diola, what do you think? How do you feel about this postponement? Hello, Diola, are you there? Okay, so, uh, yes, I am here. Um, so, for me, I mean, it's a lot of, um, it's quite disappointing. Um, like the guest said, I can, I mean, you had four years to prepare for this, and it's just simple, it's just common sense, really. And um, it, it goes to show that people do not understand project management in terms of, I mean, you should have option A, option B, your backup should have a backup plan for what you're going to do in the space of two weeks, three weeks. It shouldn't, I, I mean, ideally, people should be fired for this, really. And the excuse they're giving is really not tenable. If you're saying that, oh, you need to reconfigure. So when you brought the technology, what's the, did, did, did it take people or the people in charge of that? Did they not look at it? Did they not exploit Did they not say, oh, if this happens, oh, this is the next step, or oh, if this happens, this is So when you look at this kind of excuse to put a whole country on hold, I mean, some people should have scheduled surgeries. Some people should have scheduled meetings. Weddings, or parties, yeah. And everything is just on hold. Hmm. You know, so it's really, really annoying because there's actually no guarantee that next week or upper week, they won't come up with another excuse. If, I mean, hmm. by virtue of this, their excuse, they don't find a way around it. So, I mean, so when they come next week and then they give the same excuse, what do we do? We just keep quiet and then... <laughs> You know. Absolutely. I, 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 okay, so I'll, I'd like to come back to you again, Akin. Voter apathy. I mean, Alero, Alero touched on it. And I can tell you for free that a lot of people are really, really like, mm, I beg, the vote where I vote last Saturday, waiting, waiting, see waiting they turn them to. So I beg, I beg. Because I actually spoke to a young man today. Um, I'm doing up a space, so I was trying to get some materials. And I said to him that I, I hope you're going to go and vote, you know. He now said, you know, so he was saying to me that, oh, his boss, and I said, no, they postponed the elections to next week. I said, ah, really? He said, he didn't even know. I said, I beg, you know, they vote again, Joe. I said, ah, why? Mm -hmm. No, 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 that because uh, the vote were in vote last week and uh, Saturday, waiting they use the vote to do. I said, no, 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 that does not, that does. So I started mm -hmm. telling him that, no, you can't, mm -hmm. you cannot, you see, if you do that, it means that you are also giving these people room to do whatever it is that they want to do. So that's one I want to touch mm -hmm. on, voter apathy. Number two. This reconfiguration of this beaver's machine, how does it affect the previous um, um, data that they had been gathered for the presidential? How does it affect it? So on the issue of uh, voter apathy, I, I would say that this um, establishment, political establishment, will be shocked that young Nigerians, people in my generation, your generation, are ready to break a chokehold. Because then they do these things to reduce participation. Mm. They do this to create frustration, and they want us to walk away and not participate. You see the turnout in Lagos, you know, during the presidential elections. You know, neighborhoods that you would not find people out on election day, they had the streets packed. You start asking yourself, I didn't know this many people live in this neighborhood. You go into... Even your honey rule, I'd be a leg of course, that, ah, ah, where are these people from? And yeah, people, and people fought back. People <laughs> fought back. So the, the tools of violence and, you know, the institutes the institutions that think that they, they have control over the outcomes were shocked. And I think that new attitude from Nigerians is what we need to build upon in future elections. So the turnout will be high next Saturday. We're very confident. You're sure about that? Yes, I'm very certain. We've been, we've been doing rallies. We went to Mushi yesterday, Iyana Paja, and people were excited because people want to still have the opportunity to pass a message. Hmm. Pass a message, you know, with a very loud voice. Now, back to the issue of the beavers. Um, we will have an opportunity to inspect the viewers, yeah. uh, extract or perhaps look at some of the logs, as we call it. Yes, they can go ahead and reconfigure. That's why they claim they needed more Fine. time. But I think something is happening. You now have a generation, a political party, the Labour Party. You have 
a leadership that is saying, you know what, we want the best of our democracy. We're not just going to walk away, then the guy that won will say, let's form a unity government, you take minister, you take 100 billion dollar refund, everybody go on vacation to Paris or Johannesburg. We're saying no. If we truly, truly got someone who's called your excellency, was the process excellent? Mm. And then you've not seen us call for protest or any of the negative things you hear, oh, the blood of a baboon and all this crazy, you know, rhetoric that you hear. We're simply saying we want to follow the letters of the law. I mean, even with our candidate here in Lagos, Badibor Roads, we were saying, you know what, INEC, for the gubernatorial elections, for the state elections, we want to make sure the court mandates you to transmit the results electronically. Don't do offline mode. Don't change the login. Don't send these young Nigerians, you coppers, to face a public that is angry, that wants change, and then you've made them handicapped. Because it's going to be, it's going to be, it's mm -hmm. going to be very, uh, very this time around. intense. Yes, yes. It's going to be a lot of intense this time around because now it seems like, oh, we were fooled at the, the presidential election. So now we, nobody's going to take chances. They won't let them go until they upload those results. So that young presiding officer, you know, who's probably your cousin, my younger sister, your next door neighbor. You're has, putting their lives at risk. Yeah. Thank you. And that's irresponsible. It's irresponsible. Really so for every well-meaning Nigerian out there, we ought to really wake up election day and say, you know what? We deserve better. Mm. If I can put my ATM card in a machine, it tells me I have 10,000 naira, and it gives my card back. Why can't a Beaver's device work? Mm -hmm. Something you've planned four years ahead four of time. Years. It's shameful. Hello, so much resources Let's has take gone it. into it. My goodness. Ah, God. It, 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 you know, sometimes when I hear this kind of thing, it's like saying the dummies we get for Nigeria. No, I feel With like... The kind, of the kind of bright minds we have in this country. Let's take a break. We want to open our phone lines. Me, I want to hear how you feel right. about this postponement if you are in Lagos. If you're not in Lagos, uh, it's everywhere actually. Mm, Just yeah, a few yeah. states that are not doing yeah. governorship elections. So State. let's hear how you feel generally about the postponement of the elections. Stay with us. We'll be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we have a gentleman amongst us. <laughs> We're discussing the election postponement. We're asking how do you feel about this? Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 4663 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica, one with the hashtag WayShow. Now, our phone line is now open. Please keep it short, keep it straight to the point, and turn off the device of whatever de um, you're watching us from. And the number to call is 70 The question is, how do you feel about the postponement? Only a few states are not doing elections, right? Edo State, um, which other state is not doing elections? So, as, how many states are doing the election? Gubernatorial? Yes. Ondo Osho. is not doing, Oshun is not doing, I think Ekiti as Ekiti well is not, not doing. doing. Yeah. So, I mean, and Edo. Edo State is not doing, you had mentioned Edo before. So, I mean, we need to know why, how people are feeling across, you know. I think, for me, I think for me, most of the conversations we've been having is that a lot of youths, the reason why youths are now paying attention and participating is because we've realized that we've been doing this thing by ourselves. Nigerians have represented their country mm. in different aspects of their careers and their work. Nigerians have fought to make Nigeria a very reasonable country amongst, you know, other... We have a call. No, go ahead. Amongst other, you know, nations around the world. And Sorry, we're exhausted. <laughs> Wale That's from color. Lagos. Hi, Wale. Hi, Wale. Hello, ladies. Hi. Hello. You're Good live. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, go With ahead. With my uh, sister. Um, uh, yeah, I think the extension is good for the Reason, I do not know if you are aware that the court has given uh, approval for the use of the temporary status. I saw and that report, but I don't know how true that the, is. Uh, those disenfranchised will surely come out now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, hmm. so I saw that report where they said that they were also writing to the court to allow for temporary voters' cards to be used for the voting. How true is that? So there are a couple of prayers that were made in the, in the suit, and it was two individuals that felt they had been disenfranchised, so they got the victory from the court. But the third prayer was to allow every other defendant, again, almost like a mass action, um, you know, suit against uh, INEC, that was struck down. So, no, if you were not one of those two individuals, from what I read, um, again, someone correct me, please, uh, you'll not be able to use a temporary voter's card. So, 
-hmm. Perhaps there might be other defendants that run to court between now and next week to get INEC to, again, open the door. But from what I know, it's, it's just, just two those people. two people. Yeah. Okay. Emmanuel from Lagos, I believe. You're live. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah, you guys are looking great, and mm. I appreciate you guys so far. Thank you. But the truth of the matter is the, the morale is very high to come out this time around, seriously. Mm. The youth are really ready, seriously. It is This time around, they need to be man for man, and <laughs> they should not expose those coppers, just like the Liberal Party man said there. Because these are the people we have seen, and we might pass our aggression on them. Mm. Please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I totally agree because people are going to the polling unit yes, like angry. with fist. I, I even heard somebody was saying that they should come with their own security. Oh, they are. So, if, so, if so, so, so some ladies had said they were going out with their pepper spray. Some said they are not even going with pepper spray. They'll go and blend, blend a taro dough <laughs> and mix it with water <laughs> in a jar. Then if you think you are mad, come close to me. I will pour it inside your eye. You know, people are actually in that mode where it's like, you know, we will take back what we'll is, whatever back. it is that we want to take, you know. But it's, I mean, like that's what I'm saying. That I may be worried. I, I hope INEC understands what they're trying, what they've done. What they've done is, you know, before there was apprehension, you just further, you know, cemented really why Nigerians should not trust the system. So it's shameful. If you look back the last two, three years or the last seven years, have you found one person lose their job for being incompetent? Hmm. Name one. Hold that thought. Austin from Benin, you're live. Good evening to you. Good evening, Austin. Thank you for calling. How do you feel about yeah. the postponement? Oh, you are not voting, Sha. <laughs> well, as for the postponement, what I can say is that this is not the first time we are experiencing postponement. If I met is not ready this weekend and they have decided to postpone to next week, then so be it. Uh, it will still come and go. But let me correct one impression here. You know, I noticed that the Labour Party supporters they are, you know, they have this very high expectation from last uh, uh, presidential election. Look, the, I told you the other day that, look, in this country, for you to win a presidential election in this country, you have to have the spread. And the polling they were doing for Labour Party before the election, those polling were not realistic because they didn't go to poll North East and North West where you have the bulk of the votes. They didn't go to poll those areas. And the truth of the matter is that if you check the results that came for Labour Party in those areas, you will agree with me that, I mean, this election, there was nothing wrong with it. Okay. And secondly, elections are done at the polling unit. And up to this moment, I am not aware of any, I am not aware of any polling, any polling agent from any political party that has come up to say they put a gun on his head to sign a fake result that was entered Austin. into the INEX record. Team. Austin, why are you? Okay, thank you, Austin. Thank you, but <laughs> take address, it easy. Let me address Austin. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like Austin is being very dishonest. And I get, I, I get you, and there are lots of people in Nigeria that are, that feel the same. They are like yeah. Austin. But the truth is, this particular election is quite different because we saw everything. It's just like when we witnessed Ensa's live, but then people came out and told us those videos were doctored. Mm. Now we saw where results were being uploaded. And what was even uploaded online, you could see that the results have been tampered. Now whether Labour Party won, um, um, got more numbers, or APC got more numbers, or PDP got more numbers, that's not the bone of contention. The bone of contention right now is the fact that we were promised free and fair election. We were promised that all Transition the results, of results will from the polling from unit. Polling you see, let me tell, I want to address Austin, right? Okay, we have Loma from Abia State, but I wanted to address Austin. Loma, please join the conversation. Loma, you're live. Good evening, my dear. Good evening. Loma from Abia State. Go ahead. We are not feeling anything. I make a quality to spread our mind. I made a post of notes from the polling unit. They started manual computation. It's quite unfortunate. Mohammed, Yakub, or whatever, I don't have to take for him again because he failed to live up to expectations. 
So postponing the election does not make us happy. Even we here, we, I'm afraid that these people will come out fully unless uh, we decide, we, I and our team decide to say, let's go and try our best. Because we came out enthusiastically to vote. At the end of the day, Yakubu Isaac came out and uh, decided to collect things manually. Mm. And I, somebody is just saying, there was, if somebody was uh, gone, was on to somebody's head, if gone was not on your head, why are you, only, why did you only decide to vote? Take those results. Thank why you. not you calm down? Thank People you. here in Lagos. Thank you, Loma. You see, I, I was going to quickly say to, to, it was Austin that yeah, talked to us. Yeah. See, the thing is, honestly speaking, I've said this thing several times on this table. I don't have a problem. Whoever wins the election, you know, concern me. Honestly, because whether we like it or not, we, we will still have move somebody. On. Yeah. What we have a problem with, and I need you to understand it clearly. If INEC had done the right thing and transmitted those results at the polling unit, and the result came out the way it is, nobody will be fighting INEC. Mm -hmm. Even the people that lost the election will, will not, not contend yeah. it. Mm. The problem has always been, is not at the polling unit that, um, what's it called, rigging or whatever happens. Rigging happens at that collation where you begin to inflate figures. Where did you see 18,000 voters? Where did you see 100,000 voters? In a, you know, do you understand? Those are where you inflate figures. And it's unfair for you to say that an election that was not done appropriately the way it was promised to be delivered, and you are still saying that it was a free and credible election. I'm sorry. Even though, I mean, see, the thing is, I don't have anything to gain. I don't have anything to lose from any government. Nobody's my friend. You understand? But I'm just saying to you that what worries me is the kind of, um, what's it called, foundation we're laying for the children that are coming ahead. I have kids, for goodness sake. Let's be seen to have integrity. Mm -hmm. For goodness sake. I mean, like, it, it doesn't cost us anything. If we had transmitted that result at the polling unit and it came out the way it is now, That's nobody, I tell you, nobody would have contested that result. Yeah. So that is where the issue is. It has never been that people are saying that, oh, this, person, this particular party should have won. No. Yeah. Do the right thing. And whoever loses, you take, your, you take it with your full chest. So let me talk about how I feel and how the people around me feel. So when I first saw the news about the postponement, I felt very uneasy. And that's because I smelled something very fishy. And you that's the thing. You Everybody's not suspecting that. Yes. You won't blame me because, I mean, look at what happened the past few weeks. I don't trust INEC. At all. And if you're going to postpone, I don't know what you're going to do. You keep talking about reconfiguring the beavers. Fine. Do what you need to do. But one thing I want to say is I want to encourage everybody not to give up hope. This is the time to actually come out and mass. If you didn't come out during the presidential election and you have your PVC, this is the time for you to come out because we need to actually show them that we have the numbers and we believe that we're going to take this country back. Thank you. All right, so Aki, you wanted to say something? Yeah, so to the gentleman that called from Benin City, I think, you know, you've met a generation that has chosen to rewrite the rules. Every generation in every society writes the rules. I say something uh, first to respond to you, where you talked about the spread and the political mathematics, you need to arrive at a victory. Let's go into Kaduna, where, we, where they said we had no votes. You had an Okada rider. Win. Win House of Reps. Mm. My brother, Austin, please go and check that your school of thought. You go to Plateau State, we won decisively. Nasarawa State, we won decisively. So when you start talking, now come back to Lagos, which you can equally call the Lions Den, given the fact that we're a seven-month-old political party, structureless, four people in a room tweeting, but we're able to beat political juggernauts, not juggernauts, excuse me, I tend to twist those words, and a party that had basically not the kind of war chest we're used to seeing politicians have. So something is happening with our politics. We're going it's in the changed. right direction. Yep. We're going in the right direction. So there are a lot of people like Austin that want the politics of the old. So politics of Ghana, Ghana must go. Babai Saleh, huh? Godfather. We're saying no, we reject it and we want different. So again, I'm, I'm I am, I'm sorry you're, you're, you're disappointed, but many of us Nigerians are very excited about where we're going. I'm very proud of this generation. You know, you, you know the thing is, for me, eh, honestly speaking, I'm actually excited about what is happening. Mm -hmm. Nothing can excite me apart. If like, like but yeah. you see, the excitement for me. Yeah. Look at how Babadide Songulu has been going everywhere, drinking ice cream, doing all those things, <laughs> going to the <laughs> hospital. Ah, I, I was like, I'm in shock. He went to Computer Village. He's almost matching his his uh, major competitor, which yeah. is Badibo Road's Bible. Do you understand? Because PDP is non-existent in this um, mm -hmm. in this um, campaign. So that's 
to tell you that somebody is doing something right. That's why he's keeping them on their toes. Mm -hmm. So if you were a Nigerian, you should be excited about the times that we're in. Yep. Because it's the time that Dan says, okay, you know what? It's no longer business as usual. They are actually, there is a structure that can checkmate some of this political, um, what's it called, um, um, mediocrity that we have been seeing in the past. So that is what we should be excited about. Mm. That is what I am excited about, regardless of who wins at the end of the day. It is the fact that people have woken up and people are now seeing that, okay, yes, there's actually something that can be done in this way. And the, the manner it should be done appropriately. You know, that's what I'm excited about. You know, I called my dad a few days ago and I was talking to him about the election and I asked him, how do you feel? He said, ah, my daughter, that what happened this time around, I've never seen that kind of thing before. And he feels like the youth might be demotivated. And he's like, you know what? As for I and my family will go out to vote and I hope that the youth will come out to vote. And that's a man that is about 65 years mm. old. And Thank you. He can he, remember what he went through. In his absolutely. Let me take Kinsley from... from uh, from Lecky, yeah. Huh, Diola is on. <laughs> Jesus. Go ahead. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead quickly. You're live. Yes, my take in all this is that um, there is a go an ongoing war between darkness and light. Mm. And uh, the light is winning, whether we like it or not. The light is winning. Light must overcome darkness. I was really impressed by the turnout of Nigerian youths on the 25th of February, when we went there to vote, it was like carnival. But the light, the darkness could not allow us. We were more than 2,000 youths that gathered together to vote. It was all fun, but they blocked my uh, polling unit, two polling units, one 1,000 plus, the other one around 1,000. At the end of the day, we went back home without voting. We went back home happy without voting, looking and watching at what Nigeria is turning into. But then, this issue of, you know, rescheduled election is a, a failure of INEC. INEC, an organization that has been empowered, giving all that is necessary, required, for them to do the, what is needful, but they refuse to do that. You know, um, I want to draw, and before I draw, you know, it's not issue of being a professor, whatever you answer. That man, Yakubu, has fought against Nigerians on board. He has fought against Nigerians that are yet on board. That's the only thing I will say. Thank you. And at the proper time, at the right time, Nigerians will pay him back and his generation. This, Thank you so much. This election, uh, a common trader can do the math. It's very easy to do. It's not, it's not so complicated like they make it seem. But let's quickly take comments. Then, Jola, I'll come to you quickly. Um, so I have a comment right. here. Um, my name is Tominola. I greet you all in the studio. I already knew it, um, it will be postponed. But anyways, we will still go out to vote in masses. We will shock them. All is well. <laughs> Thank you. Please. I have a comment here that says, Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of ways. What are you saying? Election postponement, how do people feel? According to my dear beautiful sister, Adiola, there was no reason to postpone this election unless APC and INEC have something up their sleeves and have plans to rig again. If they can rig before and get away with it, then they can do it again. Peter Obi won the presidential election but was never given the chance, thanks to APC and INEC, due to their desperation. On Saturday, the 18th of March, if someone else wins, will APC and INEC agree and accept defeat? The APC and INEC are very bad losers. God will help us all in Jesus' name. My name is Daniel Elo, who is a regular fan. Go ahead. Um, Diola. <laughs> okay, um, so this says the um, postponement is the right action for now. All of these are political um, gimmicks. My advice is to let, Ni is to let Nigerians be patient it will be all right soon from Badi Job Mike. And then there is a, another one that says um, Nigerians have known INEC ways for, for inflating vote numbers. Therefore, Nigerians are ready now to protect their votes. So it's interesting. I, I like that last comment you took because somebody just sent a message and says majority of Nigerians are from the north and we have spoken to number one. You see, this is the thing that we're talking about. Mm. You see, when I hear issues like this, I mean, this kind of conversation, do the northerners vote? The answer is yes. Mm -hmm. 
no doubt they are the most very very what's it called when it comes to voting they are very very uh, um involved and active but do we also have cases of underage voting en mass the answer is yes, yes. jonathan do we have cases of inflated numbers the answer we saw videos mm -hmm. Of somebody thumb printing, no, even multiple thumb prints and all that. All those yes. figures came up from the north. The fact that you have land mass does not translate that you have people mass. You know, so that's why me, I am calling personally for a census in this country. The reason politicians are avoiding census is because they want to continue to use it during elections to say, oh, 10 billion people voted. When maybe in that place, that location, maybe they only had about a, a, a hundred million or even one, one million, right? They yeah, will say 10 billion people voted. You know, see how much they charge Nigeria for census? <laughs> no, I'm just saying to you, but, but I mean, let me give you oh the, the, the final, final words. So actually. I'll add a few things. So happy Women's Day, by the way, yesterday. Thank uh, you. Lovely women are here. Something I observed during the uh, 25th elections, Women participated mm -hmm. at the polls. Women defended the votes. Uh, I even had a very violent encounter at the collation center where a woman was attacked. At my polling unit, women stayed and counted. Women brought duplicate sheets. Even during the campaigns, so were a lot of candidates that did not have money. I can talk about Atta Chief from Lekki here. I can talk about the candidate in Amuodo thing. Women used their money, printed posters. So for the first time in the history of Nigerian politics, women dominated at the polls. Now, there's civics and there's business in politics. You wake up to elect leaders that would formulate policies that would give you good governance. And there are people that politics for them is business. You talk about votes from the North. That's another thesis. I'll probably come back some other day to talk about. But when you go into poor rural communities, they call it a PVC. It's not only a PVC, it's also a poverty verification card. It's a very touchy subject, but I'm going to be very careful as I talk about it. People that have VVCs in rural communities, that's the only form of ID card they have. So when you look at these elections that just happened, many of them were not paid to vote. So they never came out to vote. So because the politics of business, because you had a cash scarcity, was eliminated. You now saw an even playing field. You're looking at the votes in Anambra and the votes in Kano. You're looking at the votes in Katsina and the votes in Crossway. You're saying to yourself, where are those 3 million votes? 2 million votes that we mm -hmm. often see, and it all evaporated. Did those people move to Mexico? Did they move to Argentina? So I think some Something good is happening with our politics. But then again, you talk about politics of numbers and how presidents emerge. We're very confident Peter Obi won the elections. We will go back to court to, again, perhaps audit the election results. If you take your time, go into the IREV, audit yourself, which many citizens have been doing, you'll find him leading. But then again, we will trash that out at the courts. To many Nigerians that came out, I'm proud of you guys. You inspire me. I'm not a politician. By the way, I'm just an active Ordinary citizen hoping for change in my country. Absolutely. Thank you. On that note, thank you so much. I can't have fun with you. We need to bring you back yeah. more often. You made you made the you know you made the conversation sweet and uh, and you know easy to, to, to handle. Uh -huh. But thank you so much. Thank you. And and I want to say to people that these things are real. My fa my mother actually mistakenly flew to Lagos with my father's voter's card. We had to ship it back to him. Hmm. We said you are not leaving this country. <laughs> bring back my voter's card. A lot of us actually stood. I, my sister voted at 3.30 a.m. We counted the vote at 5 a.m. Wow. I mean, it, we stood till 10.30 a.m. from the previous day to make sure that they uploaded the results. So this was a breath of fresh air, this 25th election. So I, I, just, I just hope that we can actually make a difference, right? We can have... But thank you, ladies. Thank you, Diola. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Alera. And thank you so much, gentlemen. Anki. It was nice really having you here. Thank you. Uh, okay, so please... Ensure you follow us across all our social media handles. It's at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. No nation can be great without leaders with vision, focus, conscience, integrity, empathy, and common sense. Any leader without the six points will easily plunge a nation into backwardness, poverty, insecurity, destruction of lives and property. We'll see you guys tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation.